The Osa Peninsula is located on the South Pacific side of Costa Rica, close to Panama. You can find a large variety of habitats due to this prime location, from sandy beaches and mangroves to primary and secondary rainforest. There are giant and endemic trees, closed canopies, and more open and patchy forest grasslands. The diversity of this remarkable region makes it an ideal place for lots of wild animals, and it really is a biodiversity hotspot, with lots of invertebrates, amphibians, reptiles, a very rich bird life, and many mammals. From the largest land mammal, the tapir, to great cats like jaguar and puma, and the four species of primates that can be found in Costa Rica. The name of the country, Rich Coast, suits perfectly well to this entire region. This incredible wild place is home to humans as well, which means there's infrastructure like many buildings and roads leading to the main town, Puerto Jimenez, surrounding communities and locations further off like Corcovado National Park. Due to the nature of this incredible region, roads basically cut through forests, which are the same areas that many wildlife species use to roam in. This presents a clear challenge, especially for slow-moving terrestrial animals and particularly for arboreal species. As when roads are created, trees are cut down, resulting in a loss of canopy connectivity. This means arboreal species need to come down if they want to cross this gap, which has lots of risk on its own since the area is full of predators, like ocelots. And then of course there's a risk of roadkill for passing the road itself. To help arboreal species like squirrels, monkeys and sloths, Osa Conservation started a project in 2020, installing rope structures at specific sites where roads are cutting through the forest and wildlife roams to enable these animals to cross the gap in the canopy safely, so without having to come down. We aim for all arboreal mammals that live in the region, but since several that we know are more prone to roadkill and highly affected by forest fragmentation, we specifically focus on the four species of primate, being squirrel, capuchin, howler and spider monkey, kinkajou and opossums. From 2020, we have been installing different structures, mostly ropes, that connect a tree at one side of a road to a tree at the other side, reconnecting the canopy this way. So far, we have installed close to 30 of these kind of arboreal bridges, as we call them, in different locations throughout the Osa Peninsula. With more than two and a half years of data, we can see animals are quite quickly using new designs, and over 12 species have been showing up on the arboreal bridges so far. It's mostly the smaller species, however, uh, that use the defines the designs to really cross the roads this way. And we are looking now into ways to try also persuade spider and howler monkeys to really start crossing the bridges too. For this, we adjusted the designs in a way we feel might be more fitting for them. So the wildlife team already we're using several designs using either rope bridges or uh, ladder bridges or one bridge with a sarin mesh. Um, and based on that and the results that we already had, I checked how the animals were using actually the bridge, so how they walk on them. And I noticed that all of the species, they only use one, one rope to walk on. And if they have a prehensile tail, they will use it to grab another rope. For the materials, I wanted to find something different than ropes that would be maybe a bit thicker and stiffer, that would move less uh, when an animal crossed. So after talking with the wildlife team and reading other papers from other bridge studies all over the world, in Africa, Asia, Australia, and Latin America, finally we decided to work with fishing nets, a very thick fishing net, and a plastic mesh that we rolled to have a thicker structure like this and that move less than a rope. To install a bridge, there are many steps. The first one is to find a right place to install one and we look for a gap in the canopy and on both sides of the road we need two healthy trees that are safe to climb and that are healthy enough to support the bridge. Once we find the right spot then we have to shoot lines to climb the tree and then the bridge installation process really starts so one climber uh, climbs first taking with him the first uh, structure or the first rope. And he will start installing on one side and then another climber s climb on the other side and will pull the rope from the first side. And at the end of the installation, we put camera traps on both sides to monitor the use of the bridge by the wildlife. Okay, so I think there is some exciting stuff. A sloth? Hay un perezoso! So it's a sloth that is interacting with the bridge, so in this case we would say that he's exploring the bridge, not crossing yet. But maybe now that it's more tense, it would. The first results of the new bridges we recently installed 
uh, about two months ago are very encouraging. We already have two species of monkeys crossing, the squirrel monkey and the capuchins. We also have opossums already, and we had uh, a slot exploring one bridge, which is the first time ever for here, for us. Um, and also we have a porcupine that explored uh, during the last check. So that's very encouraging and after two months of installation it's already successful and I can't wait to see what the next check will bring us. For sure animals are going to use the new bridges regularly as is happening to the other bridges we have installed. So even when spider monkeys are not doing so soonish, these structures for sure uh, are useful for other species, thereby reducing the risk of roadkill and helping to reconnect the rainforest canopy.